Welcome to Nigeria Super Finals Forum. Yesterday at the World Cup, of course, it's our daily show where we bring you, uh, when we look at games that were played at the ongoing 2022 Qatar World Cup at the previous day. My name is Oluwafemi Ashaolu, and as usual, I have guys joining me. James Agrebi joins me, and as well as Kaya Dogundare. And guys, um, it was fun yesterday at uh, the World Cup. Of course, Tunisia had a very good beginning, but most importantly, the game that stunned the whole world uh, was the uh, victory of Saudi Arabia over Argentina. No one saw that coming. And of course, Tunisia, of course, they, they equal their history. We'll be talking about that, of course, on the show today. Welcome once again from wherever you're joining us around the world. I'll start with Kyle Day. Kyle Day, welcome to the show. Uh, Femi, thank you very much. Uh, we are gradually getting into the World Cup spirit now. The tension is rising. Everybody's getting used to the games. And I think we're just starting. Uh, we are we are still like a long way away. This is just day three at the at the at the, at the FIFA World Cup, and already things are boiling over. The the game that nobody saw coming, like you said, was the Saudi Arabia and um, Argentina game. Argentina. And for me, yeah. it is the single most important is, uh, sporting history in Saudi Arabia. Before this game, the game that held that record was also at the World Cup. And uh, I think uh, that was in 1994 at the US 94 World Cup. Saudi Arabia were in a group with uh, Belgium and they needed a win in order to progress. And it was looking very, very unlikely because Belgium had the, a crop of players who were like uh, at the top of their game. They had the great Esso Skifo, Ufu Boss, a lot of, of, of players. They, 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 uh, at, the, at the start of the game, after five minutes, Saudi Arabia scored what was considered the most uh the the most beautiful goal of the competition it was the goal of the tournament uh through uh uh Saeed al Wayron he scored that goal in the fifth minute and that was the close shot it was, it was, was, almost, it was almost their most popular player in the squad then yes exactly he scored that goal in fact he had to dribble through like five six players from the mid midfield and until he scored that goal it was celebrated widely in Saudi Arabia and it was the benchmark of their part participation at the World Cup until yesterday, Femi. Now, after yesterday's victory, today in Saudi Arabia, there's a public holiday because they are still, <laughs> cele they are still celebrating the game. So that tells you how important this game is. And like I said on my on, on social media, I said these are heroes, 26 heroes that will be immortalized in Saudi, Saudi uh, sporting uh, folklore. For me, it shows the unpredictability of the game. It shows that they are still, uh, even though they are, they are, they, the game is still, uh, they, are, they are giants and they are minos, minos still are able to shock the giants, which was what happened. A fully loaded Argentina team was brought down to a head by Saudi Arabia. So for me, it shows the beauty of football. And I think I'm very happy. I'm enjoying myself now, Femi. I don't have, mm. I, I don't have any problem. I'm enjoying my game. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh James, I'll, I'll come to you now. Welcome to the show, also, James. And um, yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah. From my heart, I I I I pray. I, I really wish it was an African team that really uh, created this upset because um, no more would ever no bookmaker in this world, no, no matter how clever you are, that you will see that Argentina was going to defeat. Uh, was going to lose to. As Saudi Arabia meant to say, James, how did how did that game come to you? Because um, with Lionel Messi, with the likes of Lautaro Martinez, with the likes of uh, Christian Romero, Angel Di Maria, and, Imaldi, Angel Di Maria, Maria and, Martinez. I mean, and um, unknown yeah. Saudi Arabia, unknown Saudi Arabia. The last time they even got uh, to the, uh, the second round of it was even in 1994. Nobody yeah, saw this coming. Did. Even that's why we mm -hmm. wait. With Javier Rena in charge, nobody ever thought that yeah. they're going to pull one over the Argentine. At all, you know, I was listening to a sports room and uh, some of the callers are calling. They were like, "If it's not you win the game by five zero, then it's not a game." That they expected it's not to win like <laughs> seven. <so, laughs> it's even when Sir River equalized, I was like, "That was even an achievement on it." I never what? knew that something big, <laughs> something big was, <laughs> something <laughs> was on the way. <laughs> At some point, I just, I came as Saudi Arabia support, I just backing them, praying that this was just, hold on to this, 
<laughs> you know, I, I, even they are, they are drunk, they have even seen it being a win. But I never knew these guys would pull up such magnificent um, results. Nobody is coming. Nobody. Even when they spoke with some Saudi Arabia, they like, they never did coming. It was a shock. The beauty of the world. You know, with all the controversy about the LBG, or they call them, and everything. This, this video has kind of... Um, Shifted attention now. Lighted it, now, yeah, now. lighted the tournament yes. now. Mm-hmm. Yes, now. So we know that, yes, the World Cup has kicked off properly now. You know, we did the Messi and get the Maria. Everybody started at the Argentine side. And you see the way the, the, the Saudi Arabia were just setting the offside trap against them. And everything was just going smoothly Perfect. for them. The next thing, the second half, they just came out. They took the game to the Argentines. Immediately they equalized. One we thought maybe they would go back and start defending. They still came out. And the second goal was a worldy. It's one of the goals of the tournament. I mean, they never saw it coming. You know, so for me, it's, it's a very good one for Saudi Arabia. You know, a lot of people would have said, okay, they will be the whipping, the whipping boys of the group. But now they are topping the, they are topping the group. <laughs> Nobody saw it coming. <laughs> you know, so I'm so happy. You know, I became a Saudi, like I said, I became a Saudi Arabia <laughs> just yesterday. It's fun. <laughs> and the good thing is, they were even uh, green white, you know, super <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Everything just fell into place. I really enjoyed it. It was the master class from the coach. Yeah, very nice. The, 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 the team, the players, the, the, to the goalkeeper, the, the, everybody did excellently well. And just like what uh, Kareem said, today's uh, public holiday in Saudi Arabia. We just, today, just imagine what will happen if they should qualify from this group. So I just hope that they just, you know, I just hope that they, they, they just keep to this uh, momentum because, I mean, which better way to kick off your uh, World Cup out than beating two-time uh, World Cup winners and one winners. of the favorites for this World Cup. I mean, so it, it nothing comes bigger than this. So for me, I think they should just build up from here. So very, it's a very good one for, for Saudi Arabia. Hmm. Uh, Kayode, this is about belief. Um, w- what lesson do you think uh, African teams can learn from this, uh, this uh, Saudi Arabia's victory over uh, Argentina, uh, knowing that uh, tomorrow we're going to have Ghana face Portugal, and of course Cameroon are going to kick off their, uh, their campaign tomorrow at the tournament. This is about belief. But ultimately, what lessons do you think African teams from in this tournament can learn from this uh, Saudi Arabia side? Uh, two things, Remy. The first is tactical discipline. The second is uh, uh, not losing focus. When you are tactically disciplined, there's a way, if you see how the Saudis were dispossessing the Argentine forward line of, of the ball easily, cleanly, without committing fouls, that yeah, is very, very key. The the Messi was, was, was dispossessing the midfield. Exactly. The way they were doing it without committing fouls is just... just Touched my heart. One, that's that's what they call tactical discipline. Once you are tactically disciplined, it makes your job half done. You know what you're going to do. You don't rush in. You don't rush into challenges simply because you want to stop a player. You anticipate before the player comes. You already know what you're going to do in the unlike, in the likely event that the ball comes towards him. You already you you read his mind and you intercept. That for me is tactical discipline. The second one is not losing focus. And I am happy to tell you that so far we've seen two African teams play. Senegal uh, played against, uh, uh, what do you call them? And then Netherlands. 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 And we saw Tunisia draw, uh, an exciting draw with uh, Denmark too. In both games, what I saw was, I saw uh, organization. For me, I saw organization, not tactical discipline. This uh, Mm. organization is also very important. But not tactical discipline. If you are, if you are tactically disciplined, you know how to dispossess the opponent of the ball. You know you are positionally aware. You know where you are in contrast to where the opposition is. That's a positional awareness. Then when you now take it forward, you are talking about organization. That's what I said. Uh, Senegal did, and and then you, are, you also look at being focused. That is what they lacked. The, when the game was going into the 80th minute, they began to feel, ah, we are running away with the draw. So without meaning to, they consciously or unconsciously now, Femi, began to withdraw into their shells. They were defending deeper and deeper. And the, the, the Netherlands uh, play, players were coming at them. The Dutch players were coming at them. And Femi, there's a limit to how you can defend. If you keep going backwards, you will now crowd your 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 uh, your own 18 yard box. Now or later, you're going to make mistakes. So the best thing, no. the best form of defense is to start attacking. 
If you start attacking, you are invariably, you are defending. That's what they did not do. And that's what also nearly cost Tunisia. Although, like I said, they were very, very organized, but not tactically disciplined. Because you see, you saw, you saw that at, at, at points, no th 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 thanks to their goalkeeper, they were able to pull off the draw. But in other circumstances, they could have considered a goal or two. Those oh. are very, very key. And th that's the uh, what I expect Ghana against Portugal and when Cameroon also play tomorrow, that I expect them to do. I expect them to be tactically disciplined, positionally aware, and also focused and organized. Do because if you make mistakes, you will be punished. We've seen it this, in this competition for me over and over again. Once you make mistakes at this level, you'll be punished. I hope, this is a very big hope, that Ghana, most especially, would be able to display this uh, discipline that we've seen from the other teams. I'm sure that Morocco, in their game, I can assure you that the Moroccans, even though they may not go far, but they know how to organize. They are very good at organizing. That I can tell you even before we see their game. And I, it, the two teams I'm most worried for are Ghana and Cameroon. Because of the West African flair, which Cameroon also have, we do not care about being disciplined tactically. Rather, we prefer to play, to exhibit what we have, exhibit talent. Most times it's cost the team very, very, uh, uh, it's very, very costly for the team. But I am hoping and praying, family, let's pray. <laughs> because we are Africans, we are always praying. <laughs> we are always praying. Let's pray that Ghana will be able to do what? Display the tactical discipline of the Saudi Arabians, the organization of the Tunisians, and the focus and the, uh, the, the determination of Senegal in the game before they capitul uh, capitulated. That, if they're able to do that, I do not see Portugal as a storm. I'm not saying Portugal are not capable of winning. I'm not saying that now, before the game, it is anybody's game. What will determine where this pendulum of victory will swing is how determined, how positionally aware, how tactically disciplined, how focused and organized the Ghanaians are, and Cameroon too. Oh. Um, I've been impressed with the two te African teams that have played so far. I've, like, I've loved their organization and everything. I hope the other African teams will also be able to do this. I can speak for Morocco that they have organization. They've always had organization anyway when they play. It is the West Africans, Ghana, and uh, uh, Cameroon, our neighbors, that I'm most scared for. And hopefully, they're able to do this. Hmm. OK. Uh, James, le le let's talk about uh, the Tunisia game. Tunisia, they got an uh, unexpected draw against Adema because the bookmakers had, had, you know, had predicted that uh, it was going to be uh, a, vict a victory, straight victory for Denmark. Now, hmm. uh, Tunisia, they recorded their second clean sheet in 16 World Cup games. The last time they were able to do that was in the 1978 World Cup against Germany. It ended new new. Now, what? Do you, what did you uh, what, what do you think and I should say what do you think uh, the Tunisians did right in that game I think I think they borrowed the leave from the Saudi Arabian game that just go into that game and just be organized and tactically aware and a little bit of belief you know I think they were so unfortunate that one of their goal was uh, ruled out for offside and uh, they had one of the players had one on one with the goalkeeper and unfortunately the, the, the keeper stopped the, the ball. so with me they yeah, had the opportunity of even winning the game. You know, they had the point they did decide to withdraw and um, you know, so for me they they, they were determined. They, they just went without belief that they can do it. You know, I, you know the, the World Cup is, is being played in an Arab uh, it's as if they are playing at home. <laughs> you know, they're playing in an Arab nation just like them. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So and they had good support from the fans and um, you know, that's if they, they were playing at home, so they took advantage of that, you know. So for me, they, they organization wise they were there, they, they they fought hard, they were determined, they did but Unfortunately, they did not score. You know, so that will be very key in this World Cup. If you don't score, if you don't take your chance, no matter how, how well you play, if you don't take your I'm chance, you, I mean, you are going to pay dearly for it. We also the, the, the Saudi Arabia showed the Argentina that they can play and also they can score. You know, that was one of the things that affected the Senegal too. They, they matched the Dutch team, player for player, strength, skill, tag, everything. But at the end of the day, the Dutch team got the most important thing. Really. Took their chances, yeah. Goals, you know, so that is what the Tunisia failed to do today. They did well. They, they, they had, as in there at some point, they outplayed the the, the the Danish side. But when you don't score goals, I mean, you, you don't win games, you know. So for me, um, it's a good, it's a good result, no doubt. Um, so I think this will kind of give them this boost going into their next game. Uh, I think they will play against uh, is it France or. 
um, Australia. I can't, I can't really recall it, but I think this, this is a good, the good uh, um, take up for them. At least the, uh, the, 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 you know, I always bash them that the, the, the appearance at the World Cup is always two defeats for one draw. They've gotten a draw now. Uh, let's just hope that the next count is going to be a win. Yeah, 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 let's hope so. You know, so because this is a good one for them, and I just really build onto this so that at least we were able to say, okay, there are teams from Africa that can hold their own at the World Cup. I mean, Africa have been doing well in previous World Cup. We've seen um, teams who come to the party, you know, but still, I want I wanted to 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 prove me wrong because I only have my doubts about the North African teams when it comes to the World Cup. You know, because they, they sometimes when they just come, they do they, they start off well, but at the end of the day, they just fizzle out, you know. So. Um, I, I'm expecting a good uh, outing for them in their next game. Hopefully, they will be able to, to find their scoring boots and uh, from there, uh, they just take it up. Oh, okay, okay, guys, can we quickly uh, move to look at uh, Morocco's game today? They will be playing uh, last year, fi- uh, last time finalists. I'm talking about Croatia. I think this time, um, looking at um, a lot of people have, have criticized the Moroccan uh, coach for lack of experience, but I think um, they have, um, when you look at the, the likes of uh, uh, Akim Ziyech, you like you look at uh, look at the likes of uh, Bono, then you look at uh, at a couple of Akim um, Akim Ziyech, and of course like uh, Ashraf Akimi as well. I think Morocco should be able to maybe put up a very good organization, take their chances, like how they said about North African opposition. But ultimately, we are expecting Morocco maybe to continue what Tunisia did yesterday. Kyle, they very quickly. Yeah, I have a problem with people when they say a coach doesn't have experience. If you don't give him a job to do, how can he get the experience? It's like, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a catch-22 situation. If you want a coach to have experience, you have to give him a job to do. Regardless of how he does the job, whether he fails on the job or he succeeds, that is the, so the, that's the experience you're looking at. So if you don't allow these guys to work, how, why will you complain about them not having experience? And in this hmm. game, like you said, he has a crop of players who can all their own, who are, who are playing at the highest level in, in Europe, I am sure that he, he has those players, how he's able to partner, build the players together is another thing. But don't forget, they are playing in Croatia that has the crop of his players from the last World Cup still largely intact. So going into this game, Croatia are favourites to win, but that does not mean they are going to win. For me, it just means that on paper somebody is favored to be to win. It doesn't mean it's going to go according to form. We saw yesterday uh, the the health. Actually, for me, I saw a betting horse that they gave uh, Saudi Arabia one point five and they gave Argentina one hundred forty four. No, they gave uh, 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 Saudi Arabia one hundred forty four odds to beat Saudi Arabia to beat Argentina, who got one point five. So what that means is hmm. if you put if you put one dollar on Saudi Arabia to beat Argentina, you are going to get $144. That's what it means. Mm. That shows how how much everybody put faith in Argentina to win the game. So this has happened at times. I mean, I'm not going to, I just, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm very, very confident that the, the Moroccans will come very, very organized. In fact, sometimes the organization is looks so boring that you would feel you are not enjoying their game. But it speaks to a tactical understanding of what football is all about. They play the European way, unlike the West Africans who play the South American Samba. So when you see the Morocco play, you might feel like, I am not enjoying this game. It is boring. But they are playing to a tactical formation and they are tactically disciplined and organized. How much that will help them against Croatia, I am not in a position to see because I'm not a prophet. But I know that we will see a game of organization, a game of focus, a game of tactical discipline from the, from the North Africans. Hmm. Okay, James, do you share the same optimism uh, with Coyote very quickly as we round up? Yeah, um, uh, for me, I, I, I believe um, the, the Croatian team that will, be, that will feature um, is a bit different from uh, the, the team that got to the final. I mean, they, I believe they aged like how many years now? The last time they saw the best of them was four years ago. So I don't think they still have that, um, you know, the new Kamovic. I mean, uh, I mean, it's four years now. So I'm, I'm not really expecting that chance that we see from Morocco to be of that. They have young, exciting guys who play in Europe in some of the uh, best leagues uh, in, in the world. So um, coming up against these guys, um, fine. You want to give the, I want to give Croatia the edge, you know, of their pedigree. But um, I mean, this, this, this now is like a clean slate for both teams. And um, uh, who, who says uh, Morocco cannot even uh, need this one get Africa their first victory? You know, so I'm, I'm looking forward to an exciting game. Um, 
let, let, let's just uh, keep our fingers crossed and um, hope that we we'll get our first three pointers. I'm talking about Africa now, so that from there others can you know get uh, motivated, you know, going to their own game. So um, I'm, I'll be rooting, I'm, I'm rooting for Morocco to at least get, if at worst, at least get a draw. Don't don't start the tournament with a defeat because. You know what that can cost. You know the the, the mood the Argentines are in now. <laughs> you know the kind of what's going on in the camp. Now. <laughs> you know, so don't want, Morocco to be, don't want Morocco to be in, the, in such a situation. So I, I'm confident that Morocco can do something good against Croatia. Okay, so of course Senegal started Africa's campaign. They lost, and uh, Tunisia, of course, against Denmark, against all the expectations, they got a point. So we hope that Morocco will be able to get something against like, Croatia. Like our first I win. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Of course. Of course. Yeah. Uh, Africa's uh, first win at the tournament. Thank you for the Africa's first win. This is their sister appearance, and they've not gone past uh, the group since 1986. So we hope that this time Morocco, the Moroccans will be able to maybe will be able to come around again to sing their song like we are doing uh, with Saudi Arabia right now. Okay. Guys, thank you for uh, joining on today's um, episode of Yesterday at the World Cup. Thank you very much, Femi. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, yeah. Femi. So, uh, okay, so our fans around the world, please look out for a preview of Ghana's game later today. Remember, they'll be taking on Portugal tomorrow as well as Cameroon. They'll also be kicking off their campaign tomorrow. So we are going to be previewing Ghana exclusively and uh, it's going to be, you know now, it's going to be very, very awesome. We'll look at what have the Black Stars can do against uh, the Portuguese side. Maybe Cristiano Ronaldo will now bring all the anger. Since Manchester United has terminated his contract now, but we'll look at everything that is possibly, that will possibly happen in that game. So, until later today, when we come around to preview Ghana versus Portugal, we'll catch you guys. Thank you for always staying with us, our fans around the world. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. I hope you are having an awesome time at the World Cup as we are doing. So, catch you all later today. I remain Olaf and Bye. Bye.